Picking the right lure color is easier than you think. I'm breaking down what the science shows are the exact colors that work in clear, green, tannic, and muddy water. Both aggressive standouts and subtle finesse picks, so you'll always know what to tie on. So I read a recent research study about predator fish and how they look at prey, and it talked quite a bit about color, and it really opened my eyes onto something that really simplifies how we pick lure color. So based on the science, I'll go through each of the main water colors that we deal with, clear, green, tannic, and muddy, see what the science suggests are the core colors for using in those and then after that I'll also talk about the metallics chrome or silver gold and copper when to use each of those in specific conditions so if you want some science-based rules of thumb for picking the right color on your fishing lure let's dive into it so the study that I came across it was published in 2023 it's peer-reviewed and was published in current biology it was done by Khan and others at the University of Hong Kong. Now in this study, they didn't use bass, they actually used zebrafish. But the thing about zebrafish, they're studied quite often and they're a teleost, which is the same general family of fish that bass are, bony fish. So a lot of the basic principles apply across the whole family. But the main thing they were looking at is the zebrafish as a predator, they wanted to see what tripped its trigger, what attracted it to prey and what Made, basically made it want to strike something. Now this was a pretty advanced study and they used some really high-end techniques. They looked at a lot of different factors and some of the things, you know, it's similar to bass. They, they were more apt to strike at prey when they had binocular vision. You know, bass has an eye on both sides of their head when they can look in that narrow window in front of them. Well, the zebrafish, when they had that binocular vision, they were more apt to strike and some, lots of other things. But two things really stood out and once I heard them, it's like, well, duh, like obviously I should know this, but it really kind of simplified things for me. Now vision in the water, it's not like what we see. We can see a long ways in water, unless you're in super clear water, in most environments, fish can't see that far. Light dies out pretty quickly. So basically two things stood out to the fish. One was the intensity of the color. So something that's super bright, well, guess what? They were more apt to strike at it, and they would also strike at it from a longer distance. So basically something really bright, they perceived it as closer than it was and more apt to strike. So the other thing that stood out was contrast. And this is pretty self-explanatory. The wall behind me, it's white. If I was wearing a white t-shirt, I'd kind of blend into the wall. You wouldn't see me as well. I'm wearing a blue one with gaudy logos on it, stands out versus the white background, right? That's contrast. And basically water, it's the same thing. Think of blue water with a blue background, or if it's really green water with a green background. Obviously, if it's green water, then something that's a green lure, not really gonna stand out. Something that's bright red, Hmm, that stands out easier to see. So there were a lot of other technical findings in that study, but a light bulb went off my head pretty quickly. Basically lure colors, you can break them into two simple areas. There's something that really stands out to a fish or there's stuff that's harder to see and blends in. The thing is, it's not quite that simple. Two other factors, fish don't have normal color vision like we do. We have three different types of cones, red, green and blue, they don't have the blue. They only have red and green, so the colors they see are different. And then secondly, based on the water color, blue water versus green versus muddy versus tannic, they filter out different sorts of colors. So some colors are almost absent in one, but they really stand out in another. So it makes it more complicated. What I'm gonna do is simplify this so you can see precisely in each one of those situations, green, brown, all the others, what stands out, what blends in, and to me, that's a perfect starting point. You have something that's really bright or really neutral. Once they show a preference for one or the other, then you can dial it in. But for a starting point, I think it's pretty easy. You either want something that's really easy to see or something they have trouble to see, and one or the other is probably gonna work. So on the first part of that, with bass only having red and green cones, I covered that fully in a separate video. I'll put that in the first comment down here and pin that and put it in the description as well. I dive into that. But just the cliff notes, basically without those blue cones, they see blue and black as the same. They see yellow and white as the same. Purple is kind of a red. There's, there's a lot of things. They can only see certain colors. So let's start off with the different types of watercolor and what lures show it the best and least in there. Start off with clear blue and that's kind of your low nutrient low runoff less fertile type lakes more of a mountain lake typically blue it absorbs more of the longer wavelength lights and less of the short wavelength so what that means to you and me is red 
orange, yellow, those type wavelengths, those are absorbed very quickly. But then like green and blue, those transmit really well farther and deeper in blue water. So what's gonna stand out the best in blue water? Basically a few different colors. White, that's gonna show up as super bright. You have a dark background as you look into the abyss out there into deeper water, you're gonna see white's gonna show up the very brightest versus that kind of darkish background. Then on the flip side, if you go with black, and you'll see this one pops up all the time, it's the it's basically the absence of light. Everything absorbed, that's super dark versus the black background where you can see a little bit of light, but there's absence of light there at the black, the black's gonna show up as well. And then in terms of colors, when you look at red and orange, now they don't, they don't travel super deep, but in 20 feet or less where we're usually fishing, red and orange are gonna show up as maximum contrast versus that blue background. So remember, going back to that study, the two things that stood out were contrast and intensity. So intensity, it's gonna be white, is gonna be the super brightest. Black, there's no intensity, there's no light there, so that's gonna stand out as well. And then in terms of contrast, that's, remember that's the wall color here with color against it. That blue background, when you put the red and the orange in front of it, those are gonna contrast the most. So if you're looking for a finesse presentation, you want something that blends into the background instead of stands out, and often that works out really well. You can probably guess these ones. Translucent are ghost type colors that allow a lot of the light to pass through. So there's kind of clearish baits or ones you can see through. Those aren't gonna have much contrast. And then your natural ones, like your browns and greens against the background, especially looking down deep, they're gonna blend in well. That totally makes sense, because what do we use in clear water for finesse fishing? Sure enough, green pumpkin, watermelon, all those type greens and the translucent stuff. So the science and the actual, actual fishing observation seem to line up. Now the blue water, that's typically in fertile lakes. When you think of fertile lakes, that's so many of our bass lakes. They're eutrophic or a little bit older high fertility, and they have a greenish hue from slightly green, a clear green to like really green. And that's from tiny little organi organisms, phytoplankton, it gives it that chlorophyll, the greenish hue. So basically green is reflected and there's kind of a greenish haze, not near as much light, it's not as bright as that clear blue. So you're gonna see a lot of the colors show up time and again, and they're also the ones that actually typically work in fishing. It sounds like based on the science for a pretty good reason, but the stuff that's gonna stand out the best, for instance, black. You have that hazy green background, black where there's no light there is gonna silhouette very well against it. And then also again, white's gonna show up well. That's gonna show the brightest in there, so that's gonna be the highest intensity versus that green background. And then in terms of maximum contrast, you have that green background. Remember fish, bass have that green and red, those types of cones. The greens being stimulated by the background, there are other strong set of cones. The reds, well a red or orange bait against that green background, that's gonna be maximum contrast. A couple of classic bass colors, especially that red in that green environment. Now in terms of the blend in strategy or low contrast, I'm sure you can guess these ones too. Obviously the watermelons, green pumpkins, that greenish background, they're gonna blend in really well. Obviously those are all time finesse colors. And then the browns as well, that's close to a crawfish. And especially when it's more on the bottom, it's gonna blend in with that brownish silty bottom. Greens and browns blend in really well, perfect for finesse. So green and blue watercolor was fairly straightforward. Once you get into the, the more muddy and stained, when we get muddy water and tannic, uh, it's a little bit more convoluted, a little bit harder to follow. So let's get into the muddy one here. What happens there, muddy water, you have a couple different things going on. One, there's actually sediment in the water. What that does, it doesn't absorb the light, but it scatters it. So it makes it hard to get a good focus. Everything's kind of blurry and hazy. And then the other thing it does is that brownish water, it kind of absorbs more of the red. And then like the yellows and greens are actually, uh, you're able to see those better. Now, if you fish very much in muddy water, you can probably guess these colors that science backs up are the best high contrast ones, black, and then chartreuse or orange. The black, the fact that it's really hazy down there, it's hard to, everything's kind of blurry. Black makes a really hard silhouette. So they're not seeing a lot of detail, but they can actually see a good outline. They can make out exactly what the shape of it is. So black, like the black blues and the black neons, we all throw all those colors. 
definitely points to it there. And then, like I said, the, the colors kind of shifted towards the yellow-green. Chartreuse is very bright. Fish see the yellow as white anyway, but it's also in that yellowish hue water. Basically, that chartreuse shows up as the brightest color there. And if you ever think about what's the most famous muddy water spinnerbait and shallow running crankbaits, it's those chartreuse baits, right? That's what stands out. It's super bright. So you have black as a silhouette and your brightest is the chartreuse. Now, if you want something that blends in, it's going to be pretty easy to do in muddy water. And usually that's not the case. Those fish, you know, it's more an issue of helping them find it. But if that's what you're looking for, like brown or pumpkin seed, and there are plenty of cases, you know, those old pumpkin seed lizards with the chartreuse tail, uh, you know, that used to be killer. Maybe that's part of the reason everybody took those old lizards and they dipped the tail in chartreuse. I don't know if the chartreuse was helping them find them, if that was the main reason, or just because the brown kind of blended in. But basically that brownish, uh, any of those type things, it's going to be hard for them to see. And it's already low visit to begin with, so we're talking really hard to see. You're going to have to put it right on their nose before they see it. And then before I get into the golds and chromes and coppers, let me run you through tannic water, which this is more regional. You find it a lot of times in the northern woods, like Minnesota, way up north there. And then down south, a lot of places, like you'll see this in Florida for sure. You get around a lot of pines and uh, more boggy type areas. It's, it's like tea colored water. It looks black to look at it, but if you like take a scoop of it, it almost looks like iced tea. And this is actually, it's those, like that plant matter in the water giving it that hue. And you remember the, the turbid or the muddy water, that's actually reflecting light. That's, they're not reflecting it, but it's scattering light. With the tannic water, it's actually absorbing a lot of color. That organic matter that absorbs so much of the color, it absorbs like the blue, the yellow, and the green. And what you have is a really a red shifted color. So basically your oranges and reds are what shows up and you see that in the water color. I mean, it's, it's almost a bright orange. So what's gonna stand out, again, you notice this every time black silhouettes against that dark background, it's gonna look like you're not gonna see any color. The fish are gonna see just the shape, so you're gonna silhouette that well. And then in terms of colors that stand out well, like a really hot chartreuse or an orange especially is gonna stand out well. It's gonna be the brightest color there, uh, the one they're gonna be able to, to see, you know, show up the best. Now in terms of stuff that blends in, you know, the the greens and a lot of that, the, the browns, they're really gonna blend into the background. I think we're uh, June bugs and the something like black blue flake, something like that, that has a little bit of contrast, uh, just a little bit of hint, hint of color, but most of it's kind of gonna look grayish or just dark to them. That's probably explains why June bug, you know, with the purple, with those green flakes does so well in that tannic water of Florida. All right, so we'll transition over to the, the chromes and the golds and the coppers and stuff. Want to use those in jerk baits and top waters, uh, the blaze your spinner baits and even bladed jigs. But I think that that color pattern that we looked at for lake color gets you in the right direction just on that. If something really stands out, so you can go with that bright, you know, the black, the white, something like that. I have a category that I figure they're going to see well. And then if that's not working, I can go to something that blends in more. I think once you hit on one or the other, then you can fine tune. So if they're, they're hitting black, then I might try like say white, which is the other one. Or if it said red was something else that stood out, go within that category. If if they aren't eating white or black or red, I'm probably gonna stay away from that side. I'm gonna go with something that's blending in more and try in that category. But I don't think you really have to worry about each. It's something either they can see it really well or something blending in. Once I start getting a bunch of bites on one side or the other, then try to dial it in. But until that time, go with really stand out, or really blend in. But let's get into the metallics. So chrome and silver, that's something that works really well in clear water where it's gonna take a lot of light and it's gonna show up really bright. It's gonna flash it and show off a bright flash that can be an attractive trigger. When there's low light, instead of that flash and the pulse, say of a spinnerbait blade or the, the uh, blade of jig blade or a crankbait going back and forth, making that really hot flash, when you don't have that bright light in clear water on a really bright day, what you're gonna get more so then is more of a mirror. So then it's gonna be kind of a dull and muted, it's gonna blend in. So chromes and silver, when is it really gonna stand out? Clear water, especially if it's fairly flat, calm, and really bright, those are the days it's gonna make a really hot flash. Now, if it's really sunny and slick again, lightly stained, you know, green water, that's against that hazy background, you're gonna get a little bit more of a greenish hue to that 
that uh, flash, but it's still going to flash a lot. On days that it's not going to really show up again, it's going to just kind of blend in more, and sometimes subtle is good. Uh, overcast, dark days, rainy days, and then in tannic or muddy water, like I said, it's just going to be more of a mirror. Instead of getting that pop, pop, pop every time that spinnerbait blade goes around, or it's going to be real muted, not going to show much out. So sunny, more slick, and clear water, silver is going to be your deal if you really want to call them. If you want to mute it, you don't want much flash. You just want maybe the thump of the blade, but I don't want the flash. That's where those more overcast, windy, cloudy, or muddier type of water, that's going to give you a thump without the flash. Now, chrome and silver, that's a popular color, but the gold is one that I like to use a lot, especially here in Texas. And instead of silver reflects basically all uh, visible light. Now the gold has more of a warmer yellowish hue to its flash. It'll still flash, but it's more the yellows, the reds, and the oranges, that sort of the spectrum. And that makes it really excel in that muddier, murkier water. If it's bright and muddy, it's going to put out this still a bright flash, a little bit more muted than the silver one, and it's going to be warmer. But in that murkier water, it's going to put out a flash way more so than silver. Now, in addition to more flash in muddy and tannic water, gold is also going to give you more flash on days where it's more overcast and less sunny. When there's less light like that, you're actually going to get a brighter flash more of that flash effect with a gold blade or a flat side of a gold crankbait or jerkbait versus a silver one. And then copper, it's not used a whole lot in fishing, but it's probably something we should use a little more in places like Oklahoma where they have tons of muddy water. Guys up there like to use it. This is even farther down the spectrum. It has a, a warmer yet more almost like a reddish you know, just like the copper sort of flash, and it's more muted, not that super sharp one, like the silver has the sharpest, and then gold, a little more muted. Copper is the most muted, so if you're in like super muddy or tannic water especially, you're gonna get it, that's already that reddish sort of color, you're gonna get nice flash with the copper, and then the other thing is if you're fishing it fairly deep in their round crawdads, it's kind of a reddish, almost brown sort of muted flash. And it's not, you think a bait fish up shallow, that's where the, a chrome lipless or a, a chrome blade of a buzz bait, something like that on the top, that flash of bright like shad or minnows is good. Crawdads might have a little sun on them, but they're not flashing near as much when they're down there deep. If you're slow rolling, say a copper bladed spinner bait in that muddier water down deep, you're going to get a nice just muted flash that looks more like a crawdad. So if you're a crawdad fisherman in muddy water, tannic water, copper might be your, your deal. Now the flip side is when it's going to be most muted. And if it's a really bright day, you know, that, that silver especially, a lot of flash, gold's going to get some. But let's say everybody else is throwing a lot of flash and you want something more subtle, like you want the thump of a single bladed Colorado spinner bait, but you don't want all that flash because they're kind of conditioned to it. That's where a copper blade is not going to put out near that hot flash. It's going to put out the thump, but not near as much flash. So if you're looking more for finesse, copper's your way to go, whereas that silver would be your finesse in more muddy water. If you want to dive in deeper on bass color vision, check out my color video. Or if you want to find out more about the science of bass fishing and their senses, what the science and the research says, check out my full science playlist.